Hey guys, with this release of the recipe mode beta, we want to make a video to show in detail how our control system software works. When you plug in the system, you enter the main menu. You can select manual control or recipe and also access the settings screen. Settings can also be accessed during brewing at any time. Let's dive in and have a look at the settings screen first. Touch the settings symbol at the bottom right corner to open the settings screen. The settings are divided into tabs, general, Wi-Fi, and update. Let's go through the general settings. The alarm setting lets you choose whether the alarm sounds until you touch the screen to disable it, or just three beeps. The brightness settings controls the brightness of the display, Language toggles between English and Norwegian for now, but we're working on adding some more languages. The sensor threshold sets thresholds on which the system automatically switches to read the temperature from the sensor in line with the pump instead of the sensors in the bottom of the tank. The max current settings sets the maximum current of each heating element. This makes the system very flexible in terms of power and prevents the circuit breakers from popping. Note that this function limits the average current draw and it works best with slow automatic circuit breakers. The unit settings switches the temperature unit between Celsius and Fahrenheit throughout the system. Mash mode power sets the maximum power for the heating elements when you mash to prevent burning your heating elements. To connect to your Wi-Fi network, touch the Wi-Fi tab and enter the SSID and password. Note that the SSID and password are case sensitive. The Wi-Fi connection is currently only used to update the system software, but we're working on a cloud service with third-party integration that will give us plenty of features. This is a simulator, so we won't be able to connect to the network right now. The update tab show the progress of the software update and allows you to reboot the system to install the new update. When an update is available, the system automatically downloads the update and lets you know once it's ready to install. Let's have a look at the manual control mode. When you open manual control, you're presented with this screen. On the top left, you see the current temperature. This switches automatically between the tank sensor and the pump inline sensor, but you can override it by touching the value. The text showing what sensor is selected will show in red when the input is overridden. As you can see, the sensor switches automatically when passing 30% pump power, as this is the threshold set in the settings menu. In the top right corner, you see the target temperature. Touch the value to set the temperature. There is a timer available in manual mode. It will automatically start when you set it. The alarm will sound when the timer finishes. The heater control can be toggled between auto, mash and manual. In auto mode, the system operates at full power using the PID algorithm. When the current temperature of the selected sensor is close to the target, it will automatically ramp down to hit the target temperature and stay there. You will see the PID symbol show up when the algorithm is active. During mashing, it is recommended to use the mash mode to limit the power of the heating elements. As you can see, the maximum power available is 50%, based on a setting in the settings menu. Due to the many factors affecting the boil temperature, we always use manual control during the boil process. This gives full control over the heating elements. You can always reduce the power as needed during the boil. The optional return temperature sensor gives you the option to measure the temperature of the wort returning from the counterflow cooler. Touch the cooler symbol to open the return temperature function. You can see the temperature from the pump sensor and the returning wort temperature. If you want to play around with the PID algorithm and other advanced features, you can access the secret settings menu 
by touching the Brutals logo for 5 seconds. You can offset the sensors and adjust the PID variables to your likings. You can always show the original value in case you get lost. This is it for manual mode. Let's go back to the main screen and show you the recipe mode. Touch the recipe button to open the list of recipes. There are no recipes here now, so let's create one by touching the plus symbol. To set the name of the recipe, touch the area to open the on-screen keyboard. The recipe is loaded with some default values. The strike overshoot temperature is a setting that tells you how much higher the target temperature of the strike water will be compared to the first step. Let's keep this at 4 degrees. The boil time sets the total boil time of the recipe. The cooling target sets the target for the cooling of the wort measured in the return sensor. The sanitizing time triggers a pop-up to remind you to sanitize the cooler at the given time in minute before the boil ends. You can also set reminders for mash water, sparge water and sparge temperature to show on screen when the time is right. Let's add some mash steps for our recipe. To delete a step, push the delete symbol. Let's add some boil additions as well. The time setting sets the time before the boil ends for the pop-up to remind you what additions to add to the brew. Let's add some hop stand additions. We're now done setting up our recipe. Hit the OK button to save. We're back to the recipe list. If you need to edit the recipe, simply click the edit button and you will come back to the recipe editing screen. When you execute the recipe, you'll get a reminder to make sure you remember to set the valves and install the dip tubes. When you confirm everything is good, you'll get a pop-up telling you how much water to fill the system with. Confirm the pop-up and turn on the heating element when everything is ready. We recommend using the pump and circulating the water to get an even temperature. When strike temperature is reached, you get a pop-up reminder to install the center pipe, malt pipe and filter, and add the grains. The timer will start once the temperature of the selected sensor reaches the step temperature. It's a good idea to rest the mash for at least 10 minutes before circulating. The timer for the next step will start once the temperature reaches the step temperature. Once all the steps are finished, you get a pop-up telling you that mashing is complete. If you want to extend the mash, just leave the screen at this state. Confirm the pop-up when mashing is complete. Note that you only have manual control of the heating elements after this point. The next pop-up tells you to sparge according to the recipe. You now have manual control of the system for sparging and boiling. When you have lifted the malt pipe and finished sparging, you can turn on the heating elements and bring your brew to the boil. Note that the heating elements must be fully covered before turning them on. When the brew is close to boiling, a button to confirm the boil is showing. This will start the timer. In this case, we have some hops to add at the start of the boil. Add the hops to confirm. Another hop addition reminder shows up when the time is right. When all additions have been added, a pop-up shows. If you want to extend the boil time, just leave the system at this screen. 
It is time to do the hop stand. You can start the hop stand at any time by touching the green button. You can always see the hop stand ingredients by clicking on the blue text. Start cooling to the hop stand target temperature. The ingredients will show when you pass the hop stand target temperature. Hop stand done. Now we continue cooling to pitching temperature. When the cooling target is reached, you get a pop-up telling you to start pumping to the fermenter. When you're done pumping to the fermenter, you can finish the brew and use manual mode to clean the system. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. Please also feel free to submit any feature requests or report any bugs using our Trello board. Thanks for watching.